Texas A&M Aggies were set for SEC play. And they were inside Reed Arena to get it started. Well, if you want power and you want action, you are going to see it on this court tonight in Reed Arena. The one thing that I realized coming into this is this is my first time through the SEC. I know I'd love it if the team kind of put a stamp of this is what Texas A&M volleyball is going to be. LaPuglia reaching over. That is domination at the net. I think we kind of just wanted to go into SEC play and show like the SEC all the work that we put in in the spring and the summer and you know kind of the team that we are going to be this year um, and I think we did exactly just that. A&M up two sets to nine. Block. Perfect. Casa Paula showing you why she's tops in the nation. This is our time to prove that, you know, we're a really good team and we can finish in the top of the SEC. So, um, super proud of our performance in that game, and I think that set a really good tone at the very beginning. We did what we needed to do. Here's the Tepe, and that'll do it. Biano Maneke with the finisher, and Texas A&M wins their SEC opener. The first road trip in conference play took the Aggies up to Arkansas, where they fell 3-1. to one. I think my mindset going in, it was, it was curiosity of what is our team going to be able to do for how long. Uh, and I saw pieces of it where we were able to do some really, really good things against Arkansas for a decent amount of time. It just wasn't enough. I think we could have done quite a few things better in Arkansas. I think we could have started off a little bit stronger. I think that's been something that we've struggled with is we start off a little bit slow and then we pick up our pace and then it's almost like it's too late. So I think a big focus for us after Arkansas is coming out like hot from the like beginning, like not waiting to prove a point. Conference play will always bring some sort of adversity, some sort of speed bump along the way. It's always a long road ahead in the SEC. We were sitting on the bus and uh, I was looking down and it, I felt like it was in like a future like spaceship where like the instruments start flickering and the bus's engine started fluttering a little bit. Uh, and I just had the internal like, oh no. Our bus actually just broke down in the middle of the road and we were gonna Uber there. But this amazing bus driver is giving us a ride on this public transportation bus. Um, we're honestly only a few minutes behind. We're gonna make it in perfect timing. I think it's just kind of one of those things of like, no matter what's put in your way, you have to figure out how to find a way. And um, Florida, it was kind of like, all right, we have nothing to lose. I mean, we're going into their place. They're expected to be, you know, they're number four in the country. They're expected to win. Um, so I think we just kind of kept reminding ourselves like, hey, play loose, play free. We've got nothing to lose. Let's just go and prove people wrong. And the block out of the middle for Texas A&M. Perkins answers in the middle for the Aggies. Too much power. And Lupio with the kill from the right side. It is set point Texas A&M who started this set down 5 nothing. We have a really young volleyball team that uh, is learning again how to flex that muscle. They're learning how to get into a match immediately and kind of assert themselves as who they are. I think it was a little bit of that, of waiting to see kind of what Florida did. Uh, but I thought we got down and the way that we responded was really, really positive that we just started chipping away one point at a time. Who's the Tepe back set to let Nikki, and you know that's where it's going. Let Nikki put the team on her back in that second set. And we are tied at a set apiece. Logan Ledecky is a stud, and she had a ton of fire throughout that set, and that's what we needed in our offense. We needed somebody to get up and be like, hey, set me the ball. And she did a great job pushing through that. I was super proud of her. Fighting through with a will to win at the number four team in the country. A fifth and deciding set was up next. I was uh, most fired up about it is just when we had a little bit of adversity in that fifth set, we didn't break. It was, hey, like, we're going to take this one point at a time. And they made a hitting error, and then we made a block, and all of a sudden we're back in it. And then it was a, a battle of who could handle that moment better, who could take a breath, who could be good and present. And I thought we did a better job of that down the stretch. Hogan receives it. Muth trying to end the match, and she does! No, yes! Well, all of us on the bench, like, rushed on the court, and then all of a sudden there was a challenge. So we were like, oh my gosh, but like, we had full faith that even whether we got the point or not, like we are still going to push to finish this match. Um, obviously a little bit of a momentum killer and kind of ruined the end a little bit, but nonetheless, it was still an amazing feeling. Texas A&M is the confirmed winner.
as the Aggies have beaten the Gators for the first time in program history here in Gainesville. Peaks and valleys are throughout the SEC terrain. Highs and lows are a part of it all. After the Florida win, we almost had a target on our back. Like, Mizzou came in and we're like, we're going to beat the team that just beat Florida. I've said it from the beginning of this, the SEC is going to be a gauntlet. And there's no team in here that I think is an easy win. Uh, and we learned that against Missouri. We got to outwork. Uh, and I'm hoping that we learn that lesson. And uh, similar to the Arkansas match, where we left being like, hey, it's OK that we lost this because I think we learned something. I hope the Missouri match is that, that we leave it. And it's like, hey, we learned that we have to, every single day, regardless of match or practice, come in and outwork. When you go and you look back on the match, they did everything right, and we just didn't play our best. It kind of goes to show how competitive the SEC is, but I think if we lock back in this week, dial in, get our focus muscle going, uh, we can do something really big on these next three road matches. We're, we're going to miss Reed is my first thought. Uh, going back to just the atmosphere here is special, and I really, really enjoyed being here. I like our schedule coming up. I think that we have a really good chance of being really successful. Just got to take it one point at a time. But I think this is a good opportunity for our team to reset, to come in and grind at practice and just choose regardless of what gym we're in, regardless of who's on the other side of the net, if it's our own players, if it's Ole Miss, if it's Mississippi State, that we're willing to step in and outwork those people. And I hope, again, that we learn from that Missouri match, and that's what we see going forward.